Happy Tuesday and welcome to this week's edition of Falcon Focus. It is episode number 23 and the 11th episode here in semester number two. My name is Matt Menzel and on this week's edition, in segment number two, we talk field hockey with their goalkeeper, Emily Bindley. But here in segment number one, we talk men's soccer with second year head coach, John Seleska. And coach, how special is it for you? I mean, you grew up around this program, you played for this program, and now prior to 2019, hired as the head coach of this program. Yeah, thank you, Matt. It's been very special. Um, it's a unique opportunity, especially at a Division Three program, to have the continuity in the coaching staff that we've had. We have a great connection with our alumni, and I'm just excited to continue to uh, coach and build this program and, and push it forward as best I can. You, of course, took over for your dad, Dr. Tom Seleska, at the helm for 26 seasons. And I guess step one in my three-step questioning is, what was it like to play for your dad? Uh, it had ups and downs. I mean, uh, there was a couple moments uh, where we, you know, yelled at each other and <laughs> got a little bit fiery. But at the end of the day, um, we got along pretty well, and I had a great four years. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Now, in the stepping stone process, you then became an assistant coach, coaching alongside your dad. What was that like? Um, you know, that was that was interesting because I came in with my own perspective and ideas, uh, at being that I had coached at the high school and club level previously. And uh, I think I brought a little bit of a new perspective uh, coming into the program that way. And uh, overall, uh, I think I had a positive impact with the uh, overall success of the program. We were able to build something together there for a few years. So then what did it mean to you to get the opportunity to then eventually take over for your dad? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I still uh, am in the middle of that. So in terms of what it means to me, um, it, it's been a, a great experience for me. A really a step up in terms of the responsibility and just the perspective instead of um, you know taking his ideas and trying to implement them now I'm the one in charge and the one ultimately responsible for for the results and the recruiting and that kind of thing so that step up has been um, you know a challenge uh, initially and something definitely a role I'm still growing into see we, we use the, the term or line what's it mean to you now I know when you were hired Dr. Rob Barnhill sat right in that seat and said He's not getting hired because his last name is Seleska. So, right. you know, from that standpoint, you're hired based on your body of work. So what does yeah. that mean to you knowing that, you know what, okay, yes, you're carrying on the legacy your dad, you know, helped lay down the foundation for. But the fact of the matter is you got hired based on your background versus just being the fact that you're the son of Dr. Tom Seleska. Yeah, uh, and I think that's important. Um, so if you look at my coaching record previously, uh, you know, I coached at the uh, high level in the club, club scene as well as uh, high school. I had some success there as well at Homestead High School. I helped out there with their varsity program for four years. And uh, having that body of work, I think, was important uh, for the exact reason that you mentioned, so that people looking at the program from the outside understood that I'm an experienced coach, and I, I've been in these kind of positions before, and I'm ready uh, to accept the challenge. Now, with that being said, maybe what's the best piece of advice your dad has given you, whether it be as a player or as now a coach? Wow, uh, you know, there's been so much. If I had to pick one piece of advice, it would really be, um, you know, just be organized and intentional about everything. Uh, handle the details. And sometimes you get lost in the big picture, and you really just need to take a deep breath, step back, and look at, focus on what needs to be done today to make the team a little bit better. As mentioned, your first season at the helm, 2019. Was it a smooth transition? Did it have its challenges being that, I mean, you were within the program for the last number of years. Mm -hmm. Now you're the head man. Right. I mean, what was that first year? How did, how did you go about handling that first season? Well, um, first of all, to give credit to my dad, he left the program in a great position in terms of um, the recruiting, the fundraising, those kind of things. All those, those vehicles were in place, and it was just about keeping things in motion and continuing to be a good steward of the program. Now, on the field, that was the biggest adjustment for me, um, taking control of, you know, a group of 35 to 40 young men, being the one in charge, the one ultimately making the final decision. That's been the biggest uh, learning process for me, and I'm continuing to grow into that, that part of the role. Of course, you complete your first season of COVID-19 strikes. I mean, there's, there's no handbook for how you go about handling a, a pandemic, but I guess what was your approach now? You go into what ended up being an extended off-season, not knowing officially if there would be a fall season. Now here you are playing the fall season in the springtime. Our approach has been that we're just grateful. Um, we're excited and grateful for the opportunity to play. We get out there every day on the training field and the games. We understand 
how unique this situation is and how blessed we are just to be able to compete and do what we love, which is to play. And your team right now is definitely doing just that. They're competing three victories and one defeat as we sit here. Every one of those matchups has been a one-goal game. The first three decided in at least overtime. So I guess as we sit here four games in, where do you feel like this program is at? Um, I think we have a great group of guys on the field. We're going to continue to push and, and, and get results, but we also understand that this year, not only is the situ situation unique, everyone's dealing with it, but the conference overall is getting stronger. We're adding stronger teams. There's uh, a lot of other great coaches and great staffs who are continuing to recruit good players. And I don't think, I don't look at our results as a, you know, um, boy, we wish we were beating teams by more goals. We wish the games weren't so close. I look at our results as we're grinding out and getting results against other very strong competition. And that's the way it's going to be this spring because there are no easy teams. There are no easy games. At the end of the day, soccer is a very fine margin sport. You can possess the ball, you can create chances, but all that matters is how many times you put it in the back of the net. So we've got to continue to get better in, in that area of the, of the game. Well, case in point, look at Sunday. You're taking on a Lakeland Muskies program that's been down the last number of years, and all of a sudden you look at some of the results this season, they're competing. The shots may not you know, reflect that, but they're certainly right there with the likes of MSOE, with Concordia on Sunday, and it being a one nothing Falcon victory. A nice bounce back win after a tough loss in overtime to MSOE midweek last week, but... How would you summarize Sunday's game? I know the, the wind certainly played a factor. Yeah, it did, and it's been a factor all spring. Yeah. It's been very windy, a lot of our games. But I, I want to make sure that I give credit to Lakeland. Um, Ricky's been there now a couple of years. He's really put his stamp on the program. He's brought in a bunch of new guys. They have a very clear identity on the field. Everyone buys in, and they work really hard. So, uh, you know, people who are familiar with our conference may look at that game and say, wow, you know, um, maybe Concordia didn't play as well as they should have because in the past our scores have been a little bit more one-sided against mm -hmm. Lakeland. That's not the case at all. We played a very good game against a very good team. Um, they have great players and a great coach, a strong identity, and it, it's, no, it's no joke playing them this year for sure. And Sunday brought about a different look between the posts, a start for Matson Wick. You had Matthew Klug, the start of the first three matchups. How is that position developing? I know you had a, a big hole to fill with, with the departure of Nate Yeager. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So we have two uh, young men who are competing for the starting spot right now, and they have different strengths and weaknesses. So Matt is a little bit better um, with controlling his penalty area and more solid in some of his saves that he makes, a little more technically um, proficient. Matson is better in his distribution, and he's also quicker off his line. So when we looked at the game against Lakeland, we felt like we would have the ball more and the distribution part would be more important. And Lakeland has a, uh, some, a lot of speed up top on counterattacks. We wanted a keeper who was able to come off his line and uh, make sure that he could clear off any long stuff that they were playing early in transition moments. And that's why we went with, Lake, uh, with uh, Matson for that game. And I think he had a great game. What have you seen so far from the play of Gilberto Gomez, who he scored three goals, two of which were golden goals, a couple overtime victors. He had one, he has one assist so far and was named the NAC North Division Offensive Player of the Week back on the 24th of March. He's a guy who can play multiple positions. Um, he can play defender. He played in the midfield for us last year. He played out wide in a wing position last year, and now he's playing our center forward. He works hard. He's got a great personality, and he's very positive and upbeat. So... When you see those kind of goals that he's scoring, it takes a guy with a lot of confidence and a lot of um, positivity in, in those kind of moments to finish the chances that he got. So um, just credit to him and the hard work that, that he's put in. And uh, he's a great player, and we're just so happy to have him on the team. Who are some of the other guys that maybe have caught your eye so far with their play in these first few weeks? Yeah, um, Jake Stemper is a uh, junior captain for us this year. He's coming off a long injury, an ACL injury has stepped right into the, the uh, starting role and leadership role and played some great games. Um, Will King, uh, a junior as well, uh, another captain, leader on the field. His height and ability in the air is critical to us, especially as teams play a little bit more direct. We need guys in the midfield who can win 50-50 battles in the air and then turn and create stuff going forward, and he does both those things very well. Now, upcoming for the Falcon men's soccer team exhibition game coming up on Wednesday, that is at Dominican. Dominican, an obvious big rival of the Falcons. It's been a different year, and so 
you avoid them in a regular season game as far as the North-South division breakdown goes. But I guess just how you approach or do you approach Wednesday a little bit differently than you would a normal game being that it is now dubbed an, an exhibition? Um, in terms of the, the competitive element, absolutely not. Uh, we're going to travel to Dominican and give them everything we have and hopefully come away with a victory. Um, the player pool is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be officially a reserve game. So we're some of our younger guys uh, who haven't been getting the minutes here, especially since the games have been so tight, are going to get their first big opportunity to play college soccer. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see them perform and play at a high level against a very good program. And then thereafter, Monday, back out at Fitting Field for a 4 o'clock kickoff against the Mary and Sabres team. You've already knocked off 3-2 in overtime. Do you like the opportunity, now not with everybody, but with a few teams in the North Division, you get to see them twice, home and home series, if you will. Do you like that opportunity playing teams a couple different times during the course of the season? Or does that, that become even more challenging, say, if you sneak one by Marion, all of a sudden, oh, you get them again a couple mm -hmm. of weeks later? Yeah, um, I do like the opportunity, and it's for this reason. Um, I don't think we played our best match against Marion uh, the first game. I think we were a little bit fortunate to come away with the victory. They had some great chances, opportunities to win that match. It was our first match of the season, and we had some, some issues in our defensive half that needed to be worked out that we didn't really see because we hadn't put on, been put under that much pressure yet. So I'm excited for the opportunity to go at, uh, at them again and see if some of the adjustments and changes we've made over the last few games as we've continued to improve, um, you know, help us overall play a stronger match against them than we did the first time. And, of course, get the opportunity to get a revenge game against MSOE to wrap up the regular season. But let me ask you about fitting field real fast. I know it's been around now for a number of years, but how has that maybe changed the recruiting process. Now you can sell, hey, we have a soccer venue versus what it used to be back in the day, whether it be the front lawn, whether it be the football stadium. I mean, the soccer team's been kind of moved around, and now you finally have a home that you can certainly sell to potential recruits. Yeah, as a former player who spent some time playing on the front lawn, <laughs> I'm uh, very thankful for the, the facility. It's, it's one of the best here in Wisconsin. It's absolutely a huge selling point uh, to the young men we recruit. They come in, they see that. And uh, they understand that the school really puts a lot of emphasis on our soccer program. So it, it's a great venue. The players love it. The fans love it. We're very fortunate to have it. So let's wrap up the whole interview, okay? Now looking ahead to this, you know, 2021 spring, what's left here in the regular season on into potential tournament play, what needs to happen? What do you want to see from your program for this team to continue to have success? We need to get over some injuries right now. we got some muscle injuries um, to big, important players. We're hoping here um, this week will give us some time to rest and recover. And then it's continued growth from our guys. So the things we're working on in training, we're talking about with them behind the scenes. We're watching on video. I want to see that implemented in the games. I want to see us improve a little bit every game, continue to be hard to score against, defensively organized, and continue to see our forwards uh, making the kind of runs in transition and, and in attack that are creating the big chances that we have so far. And then finally, uh, the last part is putting the ball in the net. So taking all uh, the training and the um, stuff we're working on, the chances we're creating in games and turning them into goals. Coach, all the best. Appreciate your time here this morning, and uh, we'll see you at Fitting Field on Monday. Thank you, Matt. Again, you can see the Falcon men's soccer team in person Monday, 4 o'clock, Fitting Field, Marion, the opponent. When we come back, we talk field hockey with their goalkeeper, Emily Binley. You're tuning to this week's edition of Falcon Focus. <laughs> Welcome back to this week's edition of Falcon Focus. As we uh, get the hand sanitizer out, we, we skipped this last week, so i got to make sure my hands are clean a week later, and then let's make sure the air we can breathe and uh, disinfect all the germs in the atmosphere. And with that said, we bring in Emily Binley. She is 
a goalkeeper. Sophomore year for field hockey. Field hockey got their spring 2021 season started. They, like every other sport, postponed in the fall, but moved now here to the, the springtime. But kind of a unique spring season with number of seven on seven tournaments, including in, in their schedule. And let's start there. You guys were in Kentucky this past weekend and a busy weekend in which it began on Saturday, participated in a Southern Athletic Association seven on seven tournament with matchups against Center and against Transylvania. How is a seven on seven matchup different from a typical field hockey match? Yeah, it definitely um, field player wise is a big difference. We didn't play full field. Um, we played half a field, so it kind of helped with running, but it's just a lot more fast pace and you have less people. So it's a lot more movement with the ball and just thinking smart on and off the ball. So when you say, you know, half the field, I mean, they move the goal up to like midfield and the other one's still at the end line and that's, that's, so we play condensed? actually like in the half. So the, okay. the midline and the end line were our sidelines. And then what the sidelines usually are, were our end lines. And so it is a little bit quicker and maybe more scoring opportunities for both sides. Yeah, definitely was. So you go from that day on Saturday to eventually the the actual match against center on Sunday, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but when you look at that 7-on-7 seven seven tournament on Saturday, the Falcons produced a record of two victories and three defeats, eventually losing in the championship finals against a very good center program. How do you feel overall the team played, at least on Saturday, first opportunity in a match action that counted? Yeah, it definitely, for our first time playing against a conference team for the season, was an amazing match. We really came out and put all of our hard work that we've been doing on a f onto the field and against our opponents. And you were one of four Falcons named to the all-tournament team of that 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament. And Alicia Abella, along with Megan McPike and Lori Peacock, also named to the all-tournament team. You finished with 29 saves. Were you happy with your performances? I was. Um, I was definitely surprised being nominated for a goalie because a goalie you usually don't get picked out, get named. Um, so it was a big achievement for me and for my whole team as well. And you look at it facing a team like center. I mean, you can only, you know, grow from those experiences. How do you feel like maybe you grew or, or maybe how did you adjust as the day went on seeing them as many times as you did over this past weekend? Yeah, definitely. After that first game, um, we all kind of realized their speed on and off the ball and just their movement. So we adjusted to have more urgency to step to that ball and just be where we needed to be for each other on the field. So you go from a seven on seven tournament to the first official game of the season on Sunday and that too was in Danville, Kentucky, also against center it being a, a tough two nothing setback. You split time and goal with Caitlin Fitzgerald. I guess when you look at that outcome, what do you think the big difference was? I, obviously they, they controlled the shot department, but you guys were able to hold your own and it only was a two goal loss. Yeah, um, going from 77 and only losing 2-1 and 1-0 and then moving full field, full team, um, and still holding them 2-0 was a huge accomplishment for us. Um, we Defensive-wise, we came out really strong and really held them, um, so it was a big achievement for us. Yeah, it certainly was. You look at, the again, the, the box score, and it would tell you center was up 31-2 to two in shots, 14-1 to one in penalty corners, and credit to the goalkeeper and the defense, again, holding that very high-powered offense to only two goals. But you, you brought up a good point. I know, I guess just based on talking with your teammates, you know, how difficult is that going from a shorter field where you're playing multiple matchups on Saturday to all of a sudden now you're going back full field on Sunday and all that energy you have, I mean, you, you got to dig down deep to get through. Yeah, it was a push for us. We Moving from that half field to a full field, um, and being tired, we played five games on Saturday. So going to that full field was just putting everything we had out there, knowing that that was our last game for the weekend and that it was an important game for us. So we really just took everything we had and just left it on the field. Overall, though, how exciting was it to be back on the field of competition for the first time and, you know, matchups that counted since way back in the fall of 2019? Yeah, the adrenaline was pumping for all of us. That first game that we came out, all of us were just so excited. And it was kind of nerves that first half, but – as soon as we got it pulled it together, we really just came out punching. How about for you personally? Take us through these last now few months because like every athlete, I mean, you get COVID-19 at hit. So that takes away what could have been a spring training camp. Then all of a sudden you come into the fall, there is no season. You know that, but you still have a training camp. Then there's no you know, official word, at least during fall training camp, whether or not this season would happen here in the springtime. And now here you are in the springtime. What was the, kind of the emotional roller coaster like for you going through all those months not knowing 
if you'd be playing meaningful field hockey or not. Yeah, it just was taking it day by day and just putting in the work, knowing, having hope that we were eventually going to have a game. Um, we couldn't really just take our days off because we didn't know. So we just put everything we could into practices and just kept faith, kept hope that we would have a season at some point. So coming into this season, you bring experience, obviously, as one of the uh, more experienced goalkeepers on this roster. I guess what aspects of your game have you worked on or have you focused on? How have you tried to approach this 2021 spring? Definitely just connecting more with my teammates. We have a lot of freshmen that came in, a lot of young players on the team, um, and we lost a lot of defenders last year. So for me especially, getting to know my defenders, getting to know the younger girls, and getting that connection on and off the field is – one of the vital aspects of it. They yeah, lost a lot of great talent. We'll give some love to Sam Dunn behind the scenes as a, one of the all-time greats. She's gone. But you look, okay, how the newcomers so far, in your opinion, fit in? They have been doing great. Honestly, this weekend really showcased that um, defensive-wise and offensive. Uh, we really put goals in um, this weekend. Last year was a little bit of struggle getting some goals in, but showing just how intense we can be on the field. Um, and then our defense, we came out extremely strong, and it was just great to see it all put together. Flashing back to your first season, 2019, you made eight appearances according to the box score, six starts. I guess what adjustments, or was it a, you know, an adjustment, or was there a, you know, some transitional time needed to go from one level to now the collegiate level? It was a big difference. I was the only goalie in high school, so going from being the only only goalie to now two was a huge adjustment, but Caitlin has been an amazing goalie teammate and really has pushed me to do better and just kept a friendly competition on and off the field. We've had a lot of goalkeepers, goaltenders on this program. It seems like over the last now month or two, it's been a theme. So I'll ask you, like I've asked some of the other goalkeepers, goaltenders in their various sports, how it, it, you know far in advance did you know if you were starting a game or not? And did that you know factor into how you prepared for a certain game? Um, so coach actually for this past weekend does, didn't tell us until right before the game. Mm. So it was um, just constantly just keep working, keep pushing to do my best and just earn that time. So you go back to your freshman year. What are some, I guess, your highlights or memories? What's, I guess what stands out for you from that season? Um, so I think my first game I had a shutout. I think it was against Overland. Um, I think that was one of my biggest things just my first collegiate game and really just showing up for the team um, and doing my best and getting a win. And anytime we talk with a field hockey athlete or coach one thing I always love talking about you know maybe you don't like to relive it though is the the aspect of hey you guys travel a lot and when you look at your conference there's nobody within the same you know border to border state line and you guys really get your mileage in so when you look at some of the road trips you went on your freshman year do you have a favorite road trip? Um I don't remember specifically where we <laughs> went because um, there were so many, but there was one. We played hide-and-seek on the bus. That has mm. got to be the highlight, and if you ask some of the girls from last year, that was a highlight of the season. Hide-and-seek on the bus? On the bus, yes. So where were some of the best hiding spots, like under the um, seats? Yeah, disguising each other as each other, just kind of switching so that way people didn't recognize who you were. Mm. Um, hiding under the seats, under coaches' feet, in the bathroom, Really anywhere. It was an interesting what, 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 travel. Whatever you have to do to, you know, kill time. And oh, I was going to yeah. ask I was gonna ask you about that. Like, how, how do you go about, like, for you specifically, how do you go about, you know, eating up some of those hours on those long bus rides? Are you able to sleep on a bus? Um, I can. I knock out as much as I can, getting homework done. Um, a big thing that we started was karaoke on the bus. So <laughs> that's always takes about an hour or two. So what just w- staying entertained. Your go-to song. I'm usually DJ. I just DJ. Yes, the speaker, the phone, got it all. What was Sam's go-to song? Did she have a go-to song? Did she not have to sing? I don't remember. One of those. She was a <laughs> senior. She got like omitted. Yeah, I guess. Got so. a pass. <laughs> I, she's telling us it never happened. I, I don't know. I didn't see on the bus though. Still is something I'd love to see. But um, you're from Virginia. Yes. And you know, anytime we have an athlete from a different state, I always am curious to know. How the heck did you go from Virginia to Mequon, Wisconsin? Um, so originally I'm from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. I was born here. Okay. Um, my dad's military, so that's why I'm in Virginia. I've been there for most of my life. Um, so once I found out that Wisconsin had a college that had a field hockey team, I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to go visit. Never really planned on like committing or anything, but as soon as I came to visit, met Coach Sam and saw the campus, I knew that. This is where I needed to be, wanted to be. 
and it was just a great fit for me. So when did you start playing field hockey? What got you involved in the sport? Um, so my sophomore year of high school, um, the coach was my gym teacher, and she was like, hey, I need a goalie. I know you play soccer. Can you come out and try out for us? And so since then, I picked it up in two weeks, and I've been oh, playing geez. since then. <laughs> Were you the goalkeeper on soccer team as well? No, I played no. midfield and forward in soccer. So then you're thrown out there as the goalkeeper in field hockey. I mean, what, what's going through your mind when you're out there realizing, like, you're what stands between, you know, the opposition, them having success, and you guys, you know, pitching a shutout? Yeah, it was a huge difference. But having the background in soccer and going into a goalie, it was a pretty smooth transition, and the team was just so welcoming and made it so much easier to pick it up. So what's your favorite part about being a goalie? Favorite part is probably just the adrenaline. As soon as the game starts getting out there, the adrenaline's pumping, and it's just everything else just doesn't matter. It's a game, and that's it. To wrap it all up, you look at the field hockey season, and in April 10th, you guys go right back to Danville, Kentucky, so you're going to get used to you know playing peekaboo on the bus or uh, hide-and-seek on the bu peekaboo. Hide-and-seek on the uh, bus to Danville, Kentucky, but April 10th, the NCAC versus SAA 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament. And then another matchup on April 11th against Center. And then home matchup against Lindenwood, 11 a.m. coming up on Sunday, the 18th of April. I guess when you look at what's ahead here in 2021 over these next now three weeks, what are you most excited about? What are you hoping you know to gain over these next three weeks? And you know not only for this 2021 season, but also just preparing for what will be, again, hopefully a normal fall in 2021. Yeah, just getting back on the field, honestly, just taking every game that we can and putting more shots in, taking more wins, um, just the excitement to see what is to come. Well, Emily, thanks a lot for your time. All the best of luck here in the next few thank weeks. You. That's you. Emily Benley, the sophomore goalkeeper for field hockey. We thank the men's soccer head coach, John Seleska, Sam Dunn behind the scenes. We thank you for watching, and as long as it's safe to do so, we will join you again next Tuesday. For another edition of Falcon Focus, I'm at Mendel. So long for now. This has been Falcon Focus on CUWFalcons.com.